So I want to make a data set of Bone Bone. If you've never met Bone Bone, Bone Bone is the cutest cat on the internet. Um, I'm sorry if you have a cat that is also on the internet because um, Bone Bone is going to put you out of business. Um, but I just, want to, I just want to walk us through like how we would make a data set of Bone Bone. Bone Bone happens to be on Instagram. Um, so I'm going to use uh, the Instagram scraper to grab it. Um, this is normally my, this is basically my process for uh, pulling down images and scraping them. So first thing is you got to scrape out, scrape the images. Then you will always end up with images that are too small for what you want to do. You're going to have to toss those out. You will quite often end up with duplicate images. I'll talk a little bit about that step. You're going to toss out the duplicates. And then the last thing is you have to do the hard work of just hand curating and like pulling out images that just aren't right for your data set. And the last thing is you'll have to actually augment or crop or resize these things. Um, so let's make a bone bone data set. So the first thing I would do is I would run this Instagram scraper. Um, it'll scrape down some images. And as you'll see, if I run the, I ran this yesterday and it made 2,400, it gave me 2,400 images. So that's great. Like that's more than, that's way more than a thousand. So like I can definitely work with this data set. But as I go through the data set, I notice I have some problems. So the first is there's some videos in here. Um, Instagram will scrape in general, will scrape anything on their account. So that includes videos, that includes, well, mostly includes videos, but also includes photos, right? Um, next, as I like look around this, I like realize that like, there's some weird photos of this cat, like it's drinking something weird, or like there's these other photos where they have text in them. So like in general, I know that I've got, I've got a good cleanup job on my hands here. Um, this is generally what I'll do. I'll just start with a data set and just see what I end up with. And I'll kind of be like, mm, there's gonna be some work involved in this process. So the first thing is I need to figure out how to get rid of videos. Um, I could just in, uh, say in Finder, like filter by MP4 and just delete all those. Instagram Scraper has a really nice feature that you can actually like alter uh, and just ask for just videos or just images. So in this case, this is the command that I would run to just get images. I can also get story images. I think that's only stories they posted that day or that are still available. Um, it doesn't scrape archival story images. Um, and also if you want story image, you have to pass in your username and, and password. Um, it's to make sure that you're actually following that account. Um, I don't know about how good of an idea it is to pass in your password into this application. Um, so you might wanna change it to a dummy password, put it in and then like change your password again, just to make sure that no one's scraping your account while you're doing it. Um, I'll also say this doesn't work for two-factor. I had to turn off my two-factor account um, to get this to work yesterday, but it does work. Um, when I ran this new command, it turned out I had 2,000 images. Um, so there were about 4,000 videos in there that I got rid of. Um, so again, like my data set is shrinking a little bit. Um, my next step was to sort out all of the images that were uh, smaller, than, smaller than 1024 by 1024. So if I go back here, um, because it's Instagram, if you recall, the early days of Instagram only had 640 by 640 images. They were very small. Um, let's say I want to do a 1024 by a 1024 style GAN. I really can't use the 640. So basically, if I were to blow up this image and make it bigger and make it 1024 by 1024, it'd be kind of blurry. And the machine and the model is actually going to learn that blurriness. Um, so for my own safety, I just want to scrape, I want to remove all of the um, 640 by 640 images or anything smaller than 1024 by 1024. So that's what we're going to use. My data set tools thing has a, has a, has a script called sort. Um, what you do is you pass it um, the input folder. So it's all the bone bone files I have. Um, I tell it where I want the, the images to go. So that's into a folder called bone bone sort. And then I can pass it in. What's the minimum size I want to accept. So in this case, I want only um, the, the minimum size has to be 1024 by 1024. So that's gonna go through all the images and find any image that is smaller on either side than 24 and gonna remove those. So when I run that script, now I'm down to 1,130. So now I'm starting to get a little nervous because I know I need about 1,000 and I'm starting to get close to that edge. Um, it also just so happens that I'm looking around, I'm looking through these images and I'm suspicious that I've got some duplicates. Um, so this is like a common behavior with Instagram, right? Like Instagram people post, especially celebrities or like these sort of influencer types or famous cats um, will post lots of the same photos every week or like over time because they run out of content. So they're like, oh, I'll just reuse that photo. 
Um, so now I want to remove the duplicates. Um, I have a script that is called ddupe um, that will pull out any duplicate photos. I should note that that means they have to be the exact same photo. So it has to be the exact same photo you uploaded. Um, and sometimes what happens with Instagram is if you screenshot a photo of the photo you already uploaded to read photo, it will actually appear as a different photo because of compression. Um, so this actually only found two duplicate images um, and it removed them. Um, so helpful, but like, this is also a very slow script. So I recommend saving this for as long, as late as possible as you can, because it literally compares each image to each image uh, and it can be a really slow process. Um, I could probably do some work to like make this a little bit better, um, but for the moment it works. Um, so now I've got what I think is like a pretty good data set. And now I want to start looking through it and probably hand curating it. So as I look through this data set, um, I notice that there's like photos of Bone Bone's paws, which are indeed cute, but like I mostly just want his face. Um, so I'm probably gonna toss out this. I also notice there's some crowd shots in here. And the problem with this is like, I don't want the machine to like learn people's faces. I want it to learn about Bone Bone. Um, and then lastly, there are like some weird Photoshop images of Bone Bone with a mustache. And like, I want, bone, I want the real Bone Bone. I don't want the fake Bone Bone. So I'm gonna have to toss out some of these images as well. Um, so the last step here is the most annoying step, and it is hand curating after them. Um, so when I hand curate all of my images, um, let's see, uh, where do I end? So I end up with 1,035 images. So I tossed out about 100 images. So in the end, I still have like a pretty good data set here. Um, I think it has like a decent amount of images. What I did notice, however, is like there are still some, these are actually two different images. They may not look different, but if you were to play them back to back, you would see that there's a slight tilt in the image. Um, so I have a question here of like, do I want to toss these out? Do I want to toss one of these out or not? The truth is, is that in a big data set, something like this isn't really going to matter because the machine has like a ton of data to work with. Um, but in the case of something like this, where I'm like really getting narrowed down to that edge of like just about the right amount of images, something like this might throw it off and that it might memorize this particular shape more than others. So in the case of this, I decided to toss it and just like remove one of these duplicates. Um, so here's where I ended up, 1,035. It took me about 20 minutes, 30 minutes to go through the entire image data set and like quickly delete the ones. And I've like gotten really used to that process. Um, I can like do that, like almost, I don't want to say blind, but I can do it with my eyes closed. Um, I sort of know how it works. The last step is I know for style game, I need square images. And if you look at these three images, um, I've got some choices to make here, right? So how do I crop these images to square? One option is I could crop them all centered. So basically like crop from the center. And in this case, this photo works pretty well. In this case, this one works pretty well. But in this one, it's, a, it's bad. It, like if you look at what I would get, I would only get its mouth and its chest and its eyes would be cut out. So like in that case, center cropping might not make sense. So what I could do instead is I could say crop from the top. Um, and in this case, if I crop from the top, um, I lose a little bit of Bone Bone's body, but I get its face, which is what I'm really most important and uh, excited about. This one works pretty well, and now this one works better. So depending on the images that are in your data set, you're gonna have to make different choices. Now you could also go really hardcore and say, I'm gonna go through each image and crop it for the right way for that image. Um, that is gonna take you way longer. To run this code, this is gonna take you 10 minutes max. Um, to do each image by hand using Photoshop is gonna take you a long time. Now, it might be worth it in the end. You have to sort of decide what's, what's right for that value, right? Um, there is one other option, um, which is I could use some mirroring effects. Um, so one thing is instead of, let's say I didn't want to actually crop into the image, but I actually just wanted to extend the image. Um, there's a thing, there's an option here called border type reflect um, that will actually reflect these images. So in this case, uh, Maybe I wouldn't do this, I don't know. Like it's fine, like it makes Bone Bone's body a little weird here. It makes uh, Bone Bone's face a little bit weird here. Maybe with, if the data set is diverse enough, it's gonna be fine. 
But I also don't really want StyleGam learning that like bone bone should have double ears or bone bone should have a mirrored face. So this is again a question of like, what do I think I want to do? And what do I think the machine model is going to learn from it? And the truth is you kind of just learn what the machine learn learning model learns from it by testing stuff out. So in this case, like with my data set, it might be okay to have a couple images that look like this because in the end, StyleGAN is going to say like, we know basically what Bone Bone's face looks like. It looks like this. And that is generally like the best way that we could like, I sort of have understood on average what Bone Bone's face should look like and we can produce that. Um, so uh, that was like a very quick demo of how the data sets tool library works. Um, I'm going to record a video this week that like shows a lot more of the tooling. So if you are interested in a specific process or like in a specific feature, um, like I know we talked about like, could I add solid color to the border? And that is a possible thing. There's a border type called solid that you have also have to go to border color. Um, so like if there's other features that I don't have in here that you might want, um, I'm happy to add them. It doesn't take me that long to build this stuff. Um, so if there are features that you think you might want to use with your data set, we can work on stuff like that.